started with the Marshall Covered Bridge. This is a single span burr arch truss covered bridge structure that was built by Joseph A. Britton and Sons in 1917. The bridge is 74 feet long, 15 foot wide, and 14 feet high, with a construction cost that was less than $1,000. One of the earliest bridge builders in our country was Theodore Burr. His career began in 1804 when he built a bridge spanning the Hudson River. His truss design system soon became one of the more frequently used systems. The Burr Arch Truss used two long arches resting on the abutments on either end that typically sandwiched a multiple king post structure. The Rush Creek Covered Bridge is a single span Burr Arch Covered Bridge structure and was built by William Hendricks in 1904. This is the first of three bridges that would be built by William Hendricks. At 95 feet long by 16 feet wide with a height of only 12 feet, this is probably one of the shortest bridges that we encountered. Next came upon the Jackson Covered Bridge built by J.J. Daniels in 1861. It is the oldest remaining bridge built by him. Crossing Sugar Creek, it is a single span double burr arch truss covered bridge built on a base of hewn stone. It is 225 feet long by 16 feet wide and has a height of 18 feet. The construction cost came in at $8,000. This was a great time to visit as you could crunch through all the dried leaves on the ground. As we were driving along we came across this group of cows. I decided to pull the car over and have a little chat with the cows. West Union Covered Bridge formerly carried Towpath Road over Sugar Creek, north northeast of Montezuma, Indiana. The two-span Burr Arch Truss Covered Bridge structure was built by Joseph J. Daniels in 1876. It is the longest standing covered bridge in Park County with a total length of 337 feet and is one of the nation's best preserved examples of the Burr Truss. <laughs> Hope you don't go through. Yeah. The Melcher Covered Bridge crosses Leatherwood and is a single span burr arch truss covered bridge that was built by Joseph J. Daniels in 1896. It is only 97 feet long. You may have noticed the square opening rather than Daniels' trademark arches. This is because it was modified to closely resemble those built by William Hendricks and Joseph Britton on their shorter bridges. more fun with some cow friends. This one in the front almost looks like he's wearing black socks. I think these birds were looking for a meal. Harry Evans Covered Bridge is a single span burr arch truss structure that crosses Rock Run and was built in 1908 by J.A. Britton. This bridge was a total of 81 feet long. The Roseville Covered Bridge was built in 1910. It was a 263 foot long burr arch two span 
bridge with an original cost of $10,000. It was built by Joseph J. Daniels, who was 84 at the time. He built the original bridge in 1865, however, it burned down in 1910. Now the Park County Commissioners advertised to replace it with a concrete bridge. However, the cost of concrete was prohibitive, and they decided to replace it with the present covered bridge. Now, Van Fossen received this contract to build the replacement bridge in 1910. Thus, its name of Van Fossen appears on top of the bridge. Now, here's another interesting fact. Doc Wheat practiced near the West Bridge portal. He was an herbalist with the reputation of producing cures still unavailable to modern medicine. One of his crazinesses was his distrust of the banks. After his death, his yard and house were riddled by treasure hunters searching for his mason jars full of money. Oh no! <laughs> the Bridgeton Covered Bridge was built in 2006. Now, I know we've been seeing a lot of old bridges, but there's a reason behind it. The builder was Dan Cullum, and he did that with a group of locals. It's 245 feet long and again features the, the same truss that we've seen before. It bypassed the river in 1967, was replaced by two earlier open bridges which fell in. It was refurbished in 1988 by Bridgeton Heritage Foundation and then destroyed by arson in April of 2005. It was once again rebuilt then in 2006. The south half of the dam you see was constructed in 1913. The remainder in 1916. It is concrete, 225 feet long and 9 feet high. The first mill was the Bridgeton Mill and that was built by Knockwood and Silliman in about 1823. James A. Ray worked the mill from about 1850 to 1860. And currently, Mike Rowe, not the Dirty Jobs Micro, is the current owner and has restored the mill and produces over 20 different mill products. Hey, we even bought a bag of flour off of Mike with a good story and we weren't disappointed by the story or the flour. We stumbled upon the Neat Bridge built in 1904 by Joseph J. Daniels. The Neat Bridge was the last covered bridge contracted by J.J. Daniels. The bridge is named for nearby landowners Enoch Shigerly and Joe Neat. covered bridge built in 1914 by Joseph A. Britton. It's 126 feet long. James McAllister, born in 1854, owned the large Fairview Hill Farm near the McAllister Bridge. This bridge was built during the height of J.A. Button's bridge building career. His sons were providing the bulk of the labor and he was 77 the year McAllister covered bridge was completed. The bridge has a galvanized steel roof. It has several noticeable repairs reinforced by steel. The abutments are wider than the ends of the bridge, which are instead supported with reverse king posts. The Billy Creek covered bridge was built in 1895 by Joseph J. Daniels, 62 foot long bridge. The Billy Creek bridge was named for the nickname of the creek. The bridge replaced an earlier one constructed by J.A. Britton in 1880. The Cox Ford Covered Bridge, built in 1913 by Joseph A. Britton, is 176 feet long at an original cost of $4,000. Cox Ford was not the original bridge built. They built a steel bridge. Um, however, that was washed away by the flood of 1913, leading to the construction of the Covered Bridge. And finally, we come to our last covered bridge, the Wilkins Mill. It was built in 1906 by William Hendricks. 102 feet long. This was the second of three covered bridges built by William Hendricks. Wilkins Mill was built in 1835 by Solomon Jessup 
and Zimri Hunt. The mill was sold to George Wilkins in 1855. He tore down the old mill and built a new one. This was the source of the name Wilkins Mill. This mill burned down in 1877. A new mill was built which stood until 1947. Well, if you ever get down to Indiana and you want to have a really great time, we encourage you to come out and visit these covered bridges. We had a blast. It was fun to drive through them and fun seeing them. Thank you.